My next guest, uh, it really is like a, a legend. Uh, he's the only coach in the history of college basketball that's won over 400 games at two schools. Uh, 15 years, Kansas, one of the top two or three programs, now at Carolina, which I think has the most rabid fan base in the country, the best uniforms. And uh, Roy Williams is the head coach there for 17 years. Three titles. By the way, 2017, I think, was his most impressive title. Um, if you just looked at the team and the, the, it was so different than most, you know, star studded college teams I grew up with. Uh, Roy Williams is joining us. So I'm just, I'm, you know, tickled watching this whole last dance thing. And you were a, you were an assistant under the legend Dean Smith. (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, so much, uh, Roy, is is mythology that, you know, Michael was cut uh, and Michael just, you know, he barely was a high school player. I remember when I first was introduced to Michael, he was like a McDonald's All-American high school player. So I didn't I didn't hear, <laughs> you know, but but, you know, it, it's a better story to say he was no good in high school. So let's go back, Roy. You're a pretty good judge of talent. The first time you spotted Michael Jordan was when? It's crazy, Colin. I'm glad to be with you. But, yeah, you watch The Last Dance and all those things that you forget about the first part of it. He was not a bad high school player. He just didn't make the varsity as a sophomore. They kept him on the JV team. But, no, I can remember like it was yesterday. uh, I was an assistant to Coach Smith. Eddie Fogler was one of the assistants. Uh, Coach Bill Guthridge uh, uh, was one of the assistants. He was my coach on the freshman team 100 years ago. We had our camp going on, and we had uh, I, Eddie Fogler and I had called around the state and tried to get the best players we could to come to our camp. And we said, now the bad news is you've got to pay because we don't let anybody come free. You can't do that. But on Sunday afternoon, the first week that Michael was in camp, uh, I was opening up Carmichael Auditorium at that time, and kids were coming down and playing pickup. And the council would bring over about 30 kids at a time, and then take them back. Another counselor would show up. So you had them for about 20 minutes because every kid was not going to get to play in Carmichael. And that right. was our home arena at that time. So we were trying to let the little kids get a chance to be in there as well. And so he he came over, and I thought, wow. And I told him, I said, I want you to stay with the next group. And I told his counselor to take that group back. And so Michael stayed a second 20-minute period, and then he went back to the dorm. And, Colin, it was hot. It was June in North Carolina. That's like a mile walk. And then all of a sudden, two groups later, he shows up again. And he said, no, I just love to play. And so we kept him down there. And uh, I'm not joking whatsoever. I told Eddie Fogler that night, I think I just saw the best six-foot-four-inch high school player I've ever seen. Wow. And and I gave him a ride back to the dorm, didn't make him walk back into something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's you know what's interesting about this, Roy, and why I think this is so important, because it's showing young people today how hard success is. Mm-hmm. That he, you know, he he grew. He had a growth spurt, which you know a lot of boys do. Girls stop growing about mm-hmm. twelve, thirteen. Boys can pop at sixteen or seventeen. Anthony Davis did that. So mm-hmm. then you get Michael at Carolina, and much like high school, Roy, he was good, but I. I he popped there, right? Like he got significantly better in college. Well, his freshman year, he was fantastic, quote, for a freshman. But we had James Worthy and Sam Perkins, so the load wasn't on him. But his freshman year, he was fantastic. We had the confidence in. I'll never forget as he's walking out of the huddle in New Orleans with 31 seconds to play. Coach Smith slapped him on the back and said, if you get the shot, knock it in. I mean, the game winner won the national championship. And what people never even know that year, as in all of our teams and still my teams, we give out awards after each game. We grade the tape. Now, it used to be called grade the film. Every player on every play, offensive and defensive. And Michael Jordan was the defensive player of the game in the Georgetown game also. So he was a big-time player. But his freshman year, the day before practice started, I always – got everybody's height, the reaching height, the vertical jump, and then we went outside and we did the 40-yard dash. And I timed every one of them for 10 years. The same spot on the wall that they stood there to measure them, I had seen the jump against the wall, so it's always going to be a little bit, a little lower than somebody's going to say they have an 88-inch vertical jump or all that crap because they're jumping against a wall, so it's not going to be quite as much. But Michael's vertical jump was really good, but he was six four and a half. The next year on October 14th, I measured same wall, same standard. He was 6'6". And 
40 yard dash time and i'm not going to remember it exactly right now but his freshman year he was really athletic and fast he was like a, a four or five okay right. And I'll never forget this. His sophomore year, ran the 40 yard. Me and Coach Guthridge and our trainer, Mark Carnes, we all three had hand stopwatches. So we're not professional timers by any means. But he crossed the line. I looked and I said, Wow, I said, Coach Guthridge, what'd you get? And he looked at me and then Mark Davis said, I got 439. And Coach Guthridge said, I got 438. And I said, I did too. <laughs> and so I waited a couple of times. I said, Michael, we missed your start. We made a mistake here. Come on, I need you to run it again. And he said, oh, too fast for you, huh? I'll never forget that. <laughs> and he goes back to the line and uh, runs it again. And all of us got below 4'4 four, four wow. as a sophomore. So he was he went from 6'4 to 6'6 six, six and got faster. And, you know, I mean, he got stronger. And he didn't, as, as the episodes last night even said something about it, he didn't really buy into the weight program. We were just starting yeah. at that time. But he didn't buy into that, in, you know, until he got in the NBA. But you're right. It shows uh, uh, kids, people, that guys can get better. Uh, they can big, get bigger. They can get stronger. And that's what he did. And it's uh, this thing, I mean, I watched it, never took my eyes off of it last Sunday night, and, and I, re, I know what was going on at that time. I was close, and I, I followed them closely, to say the least, and went to see playoff games, and, and I watched it last night, and I was not in a single episode, and I was even more excited about watching it. I mean, ESPN is saying, thank the Lord, my ratings are doing real well now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Roy Williams joining us. You know, Roy, and I have said this, I have nothing against the G League. But I have said this time and again. I think the NBA is making a mistake. The only reason I know who Zion is is college basketball. And I worry about taking a kid away from Roy Williams, Mark Few, Jim Beheim, uh, Mike Krzyzewski, Bill Self, taking a kid away from that and throwing him into the Fort Wayne Mad Ants against a coach who may do a fine job, but he's not you. Let's go back to Michael. I was blown away, Roy, by his polish his refinement after three years at Carolina because he was asked almost halfway into his rookie year, you may be the face of the league, young man. I think college basketball and Dean and you really helped refine him. So go back to when he showed up on campus and when he left. How did he change as a man, as a human being, in your opinion? In every way possible. And I'm telling you, great mom and great dad, They were. it was a family and they were – so good with him they came to every game and and you know it was a two and a half hour a little less than two and a half hour drive from where their home was you see there in every game but they did such a great job with him but yet one of the cutest things on the whole deal the first when he his mom reads the letter yeah. about him you know i need some stamps and uh, you know i've always said colin that there's no perfect rule uh, LeBron did not make a bad decision. Kobe did not make a bad decision. Right. But there are a bunch of guys that did. I don't know that college has ever hurt anyone. Some kids have more interest in the academic side and getting a college education, having a college experience. So there's no perfect rule for everyone. But, you know, what's going on in the G League now sort of makes you shrug and shake your head a little bit. I mean, the, N the NBA has always had the greatest farm system in the world in college basketball and didn't have to invest any money. Right. And, uh, you know, so it's it sort of makes me shake my head a little bit. But, you know, people some people think it's progress. Some people don't. But it's the world we live in. But uh, uh, he was the most driven person I've ever known the most focused I've ever known, the greatest competitor I've ever known. And think about this is last night when I'm watching talks about, you know, uh, Collins, uh, Doug gave him, gave me the ball, put it in my hands. And now Phil Jackson comes in. He wants to take it out. Yeah. But he looked at it and believed in it and gave it a chance and says, okay, I'll change. And, you know, in today's generation, I don't know that you could find guys that would do that thing. <laughs> In my own opinion, I don't think you could at all. But it shows how badly that young man wanted to win and, and still does on the golf course. I mean, it's still the same way. But, you know, he, I've really enjoyed it. And like I say, I was, in, I was lived it from a distance. I was involved from a distance. I knew what was going on. I came to games. I talked to him. I had him to come and, work, you know, speak at my camp those first couple of years, played golf with him several times. 
but still I'm just sitting there and, and I'm trying to do some other things, but I put the pencil down in, in 30 seconds before the commercial is over with because I don't want to miss anything. Yeah, it's just so amazing. You know, they used to joke when Michael was scoring 60 in the NBA, they'd say, you know, the only guy that could hold him under 20 points was Dean Smith. And it, it was kind of a funny line. But the truth yeah, is... Yeah, it sort you... of pissed me off. <laughs> it's truth what it still does. And, and my wife hates me to use that word. But, I mean, first of all, there was no clock in college basketball. Uh, Secondly, they could double team, triple team, and thirdly, Michael was a unselfish player. And and the biggest thing of all, hey, we still freaking won games. <laughs> well, you also had back then you had four NBA players on the floor, so it was yeah. And it, his junior, his sophomore year, he did average twenty, but nobody wants to admit that. It's just a, a cute line for everybody to say. Do you think, Roy, when you look back at it, is that your ability? to make him play in Carolina's system is why he bought into Phil. Because he went back and thought, wait a minute, I've played in a system that wasn't totally dependent on me. And we won a championship that in the end, your history with him allowed him to go, okay, I've got an experience playing in a strong coach-driven system. Oh, wait, we won 90% of our games that way. Have you ever seen it from that end of the telescope? No, I never have because I think, you know, and Coach Smith, I think, is the best there ever was, and he was even better off the court than he was on. But he got Michael to buy into our team doing well, and he would still do okay. I tell my guys, I said, the teams that win, and I wish it was more eloquent and a better way to say it, but I say the teams that win, their players get the awards and rewards, and Michael's only award and reward he wanted was to win. Yeah. And I think you have to congratulate him he said, okay, and, and, and using your your thought process there, he said, hey, I did some things here, and we won, but he was so intelligent on the basketball court, and, I mean, I loved it last night when he did say that Doug wanted to ball my hands and Phil wanted to take it out, but then he said, hey, Pax is open, and, you know, so he started believing, and he, he was trusting. He didn't start anybody on the bad end. He gave you a chance. Yeah. And I think he's done that with everybody. And uh, and with each success, he trusted you more. But uh, he, he was so intelligent. And uh, and it's, it's I mean, I love the, I'm going to watch it every Sunday night. And I guarantee you, people are bound to get tired of watching the 1981 uh, this or the 2001 Celtics versus the Miami. You know, now all of a sudden, this is something that people are changing their schedules to watch on Sunday night, and I really believe that. Uh, by the way, Fox Sports did a bracket for the best fans in college basketball. Two and a half million votes were cast, and mm-hmm. Carolina won. <laughs> um, you, it, well, I voted 7,000 times myself. <laughs> 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 no, I did not know that fact. I think I might have to use that in recruiting. <laughs> yeah, no, you guys have an amazing fan base. And I, and I wonder, because when you go back to recruiting Michael, Carolina at that time... I'm thinking back on it. It was the Big East had some swag and Carolina mm-hmm. to me. It was it a hard was it a hard recruit or did you know early you had Michael? Well, it wasn't hard because we got started so earlier than the rest of them because he didn't blow up. In fact, Coach Smith at one time got a little mad at me because I had called his high school coach about him coming to camp, and then he's camp, and then his high school coach came and worked the camp. And we're going to get dinner late, 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 hot dogs. And I don't drink at all, but everybody was having a beer or whatever. And his high school coach told me, he said, well, he's going to, he wants to go to one more camp. Should he go to Garth's five-star camp or should he go to camp in Milledgeville, Georgia? And I said, I think he should go to Garth's camp at five-star because the fundamental stations every morning help everyone. And so then... Michael decides that's where he wants to go. And I call Garth and say, this guy's really good. Just keep your eyes on him. And then he was so good that they invited him to stay a second week and made him a waiter cleaning up the tables at lunch and dinner and breakfast and so didn't charge him. And at the end of that time, he was a one-on-one champion of the week, the most outstanding player of the week, the MVP of the All-Star game, the leading scorer of the week. And the fifth, <laughs> there were five major awards, and he got all five. <laughs> but we were, way, we were way ahead at that time. But still, Michael had to make decision, and Coach Smith talked to his parents about he will have a great opportunity, but he also talked to the parents about the education that he would get at North Carolina. 
and you 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 watched his mom and dad were fantastic oh great people. and so yeah for us we were a little head but that doesn't mean we weren't scared to death at the end that, that something could happen but again i can't express fully enough how strong that family bond was and uh that was important to them that he they, he played for coach smith because you know at that time there were only seven or eight schools in the acc anyway now there's 15 uh yeah. but you're right we did have a lot of attention yep. coach smith had got had a great deal of success and 76 had won the gold medal and you know so there were some things there but we had so luckily for us we had just gotten a head start on most people Hey, it's great talking to you, Roy. I love this. This was uh, a trip down memory lane, and um, I appreciate you giving our audience a glimpse behind the door. I loved your stories. Well, Colin, I appreciate it. My son had a great thing. He said, hey, Pop, he said, uh, all this thing about Michael is making more people think you know what the crap you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, send, send our best to your family and your son. Thanks, Roy. All right. Stay safe, Colin. Thank you very much. Thank you.